Welcome to this tutorial, where we'll show you how to monitor Sigfox data with PRTG. Sigfox is an IoT service provider, and we're going to get data that is set by Sigfox devices to the Sigfox cloud and pull it into PRTG so that we can monitor it, set notifications and alerts and so on. We'll show you how to set up three sensors. First, one that's going to measure sensor data coming from a Sigfox device, such as temperature, humidity levels, sound pressure levels, and so on. Next, we're going to monitor geolocation information, so the geographical location of a Sigfox device. And finally, we're going to query some extra information about a Sigfox device using the Sigfox Cloud REST API. And finally, we'll show you some PRTG functionality where we set up a dashboard using our maps and we show you how easy it is to clone devices and set up further monitoring options. Let's go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is set up uh, the sensor data monitoring in PRTG. So we have a Sigfox uh, device. It's sending data to the Sigfox cloud. The kind of data that this spe specific device is sending is temperature, sound pressure levels, light levels, uh, humidity, and so on. It's sending all of that to the cloud, and we want to monitor the data that we're getting from the Sigfox device in PRTG. The way that we will do this is we will first set up a sensor in PRTG. We'll assign it a token. Then we will set up what's called a callback in the Sigfox backend. Uh, we'll use the same token as we used in PRTG there. So uh, it will send the HTTP data directly to uh, the correct sensor in PRTG. So let's have a look at how we do this. As I said, um, here's the list of devices that we have that are configured and uh, set up in, in Sigfox. These are all Sigfox devices. The one that we're going to use today is this one over here. And if you have a look, there is an ID over here, 1D25CA. And what I'll do is use that as the token when, when I set up the sensor in PRTG. You don't have to. The token is actually arbitrary. You can make it anything you want. But just for uh, tracking purposes, I'm going to make it the same ID as my Sigfox ID. Right. Here's our PRTG environment. We, um, we are going to set up a new group for our sensors. So let's go add group. We want it to be in the demo. Continue. And let's call it Sigfox Video Tutorial. And that's all we need for now. And there's our new group. Into our new group, we're going to add a device. I'll click on Add Device here. And we'll call it Sense Sigfox Sensor Data. I need to give it a name or an address, and we'll call it 127.0.0.1. And now we have our device. And of course, now we need to add the sensor that we're going to use to monitor the Sigfox data. We add the sensor, and on the screen, you can search for specific sensors that you want. Our one is called IoT Push Data Advanced, HTTP IoT Push Data Advanced. And if I click on it, I can set up our sensor. So I'm going to call it sensor data as a sensor name. And here, um, it's uh, I'm using the cloud environment. And in our cloud environment, it's the default is HTTPS as the SSL version and 5051 as the port. Here is where we give the uh, identification token of the sensor in. And this is the connection between the callback that we're going to set up in Sigfox. So here I give the identification token that I decided on in, and I can create. In fact, before I create, I'm going to uh, set this scanning interval to, let's say, 15 minutes and create. And now we've got a sensor. The problem is, of course, we're not getting any data yet. We need to configure that data is pushed to the sensor. So we go to the Sigfox device list, and on our Sigfox side, we click on the, de the, the device that we're going to be using. And here you can see in the left-hand menu, there's a callbacks option. And this is where we set our callback. Here you can see all the callbacks that are already set up for this device. We are going to set up a new one for our video tutorial. It's, uh, the, the, it's a custom callback. And now we get taken to the setup screen. We can leave the type as data and uplink. 
and channel is URL, that's all fine. Now you'll see there's two fields uh, that we have to fill in here. The one is called custom payload config, config field, and the other one is called the URL pattern field. The custom payload config is essentially the definition of what variables we're sending from the device. Uh, and we're also divine, defining things like uh, inter whether they're integers and so on. And uh, very important here is the order that we send the, the um, uh, that the device is sending the data. This is provided by your manufacturer, and you can find this kind of information in the uh, manufacturer in the, the uh, manuals of your devices or on the online support sites. For our case, the custom uh, payload. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is a custom payload over here, and you can see that we're defining some variables, for example, ten, temp2, or um, over here we, ha we have SPL, which is sound pressure level, um, and so on. So these are the variables that we're sending, and that's the custom payload. So I'm going to copy and paste this exactly as it is into our custom payload field. There we go. And as a URL pattern, so the URL pattern is basically um, setting up the structure of how we're sending the data to PRTG. And what this looks like um, is over here. This is, the, this is a URL pattern. What you can see is we can define whether it's HTTP or HTTPS. Then the path to our environment along with the port. And if you remember, we set up our uh, PRTG sensor with the port number of 5051. And then the token is the ID that we provided uh, for the sensor when we sent it up in PRTG. And as I said, that's the link between the Sigfox and the PRTG environment. Then in the result tabs, for each result tab, we are defining channel, the channel. In this case, it's called temperature. And the value is custom data hashtag temp2. Now that we are getting, as you can see from our custom payload, that is the variable that we're pulling into our URL pattern. And that's essentially how you set it up. We have documentation for this, uh, which you can check out on the PRTG web, uh, the PESLA website, and also information in our knowledge base about this. So I'm not going to copy that. I've set up an example for our specific environment which I'm going to copy and paste into this here, into our Sigfox screen here. Now, um, I've set up the path to our environment along with the port number. Now I need to enter the token number that we used. And let's just go back to our sensor. I've forgotten what the number was. Um, here we have the identification token, I'm going to copy it and set it up here in the token field. And that is pretty much all you need to do. The callback has been set up. We have the sensor set up in PRTG. I'm going to click OK. And we now have a callback from this Sigfox environment. The thing we need to keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier on, our device has a 15 minute delay, uh, it sends data only every 15 minutes. So depending where in the cycle we are, we might have to wait a maximum of 15 minutes. So now we wait. All right, so we now have data from Sigfox in our PRTG sensor. If we have a look here, the sensor is green with a check mark, and that means we're receiving data. Um, if I click on the sensor now, we can see that the information has been split into several channels. Um, and if you have a look at the values, though, you'll realize that uh, they're, they're looking a bit meaningless at the moment. The reason for this is the data is sent from the device. A devi the, devi the Sigfox devices have a limit of 12 bytes. Um, so they uh, pass the data and send it. And now we need to basically do some formatting on our side. It's pretty easy to do this in PRTG, and we're going to quickly uh, set it up. For each channel, you can see there's a channel settings button. If I click on it here, I then can set up the unit. So this is humidity. Let's, we're going to be measuring it with percentage. The scaling multiplication uh, in this case was 100, and the division is 65536. And this is, this is the kind of information you can get from your manufacturer as well. Uh, click OK. And now if we look at the humidity, it's looking far more um, meaningful. Let's do the same thing for light. For light, we're going to measure it 
with lux. Scaling multiplication for the light sensor, in this case it was 100,000. Same scaling division, 65536. All right, and SPL, sound pressure level, is going to be in decibels. And temperature, of course, is degrees Celsius. Oops. Degrees Celsius. Same multiplication and division. Okay. And we can we'll, we'll just leave the light the UV level for now. Um, but there you can see we, how easy it is to uh, f format the data in PRDG. With the other with other tools, you need to write a JavaScript in order to do this. Um, but it's very easy to do with PRTG. So there we have it. The device is set up. Uh, it's we're monitoring now. The great thing is I can now go and set up thresholds for the different channels. And I can set up notifications to notify me when the room gets too warm, when the room gets too cold, if the humidity is too much, um, uh, all right from PRTG. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a sensor to monitor geolocation. So essentially, Sigfox devices send geographic information to the Sigfox cloud, and we can receive that in PRTG. Just a note on geolocation for, for the Sigfox, Sigfox devices, it's not GPS. Um, information, but rather a triangulation with some algorithms, and it gives us a good idea of, of a radius of where that device is located. So how do we set that up? Let's add a new device, and we're going to call this device Geolo Sigfox Geolocation. Sigfox Geolocation. And once again, we have to give it a name and address. Add sensor. Now, the sensor that we use for Sigfox geo geolocation is also the IoT push data advanced, um, uh, advanced sensor. And we're going to geolocation sensor to keep things clear. Once again, SSL version, SSL port is set. And once again, as we did before, we need to give it a, the identification token that identifies the sensor data that will be coming from Sigfox. What we'll do in this case is we'll use the device ID from Sigfox once again. This one over here. And I'll call it underscore geolocation. Otherwise, it would be the same as the one that we've already set up, and that wouldn't work. All right, and we can create that sensor. So now, as we did before, we need to set up uh, the Sigfox cloud that we can receive the geolocation data. So back to Sigfox devices, click on the device that we're using, go to callbacks, and we are going to set up another custom callback. So click on New, Custom Callback. And this time, we need to change the type. It's now Service and Geolocation. Now, what you'll notice is there is no longer a custom payload option. The reason for that is the geolocation information is standard, um, so we don't need to set up a custom payload. We do, of course, need to set up a URL pattern as we did before. So much like we did before, let's have a look at what the, uh, the pattern looks like. Here you can see, once again, you can define whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, the path, the port, and the unique token that you've given the sensor in PRTG. And this time you can see we're sending uh, longitude and latitude details for the geolocation information. Right, so let me enter my details. into our URL pattern. <clears throat> and 
and there you can see I've got my path, my port. I just need to configure the token. The token will be the same as my geolocation sensor ID. I'm just going to copy it so I can make sure I get it right. There we go. There's my token ID. And again, that's it. We're done. If I click on OK, we now have a service callback at the bottom here. You can see there's our geolocation callback that we've set up for our device. So now again, we have to wait a certain period of time until the information arrives in PRTG. Okay, we now have geolocation data in PRTG from our Sigfox device. If you have a look here, it's green with a check mark. Uh, and if I click on the sensor, you can see I'm now getting latitude, longitude, downtime, and so on. We need to make sure that accuracy is set up as the um, primary channel for the sensor. It, you don't have to do it, but it just makes things much better uh, later on when we set up our maps. And there's not much more that we need to do, except we want our device group to inherit the location settings from the sensor or to get, to get its uh, location data from the sensor. Uh, if you have a look here, there is an ID 2019. So we need to keep that in mind. And now we go back to our de device view in PRTG. And I click on my group. And in the group, I can go to settings here. Now you'll see the location is inherited from the parent. I don't want to do that. I want to get location details from our specific sensor for this for this entire group. So let's paste in here. This is uh, this you can also find in our documentation uh, on the Pestle website. This shows you how you can set up um, the map details. All you need to do is replace the sensor ID that was the 2019 that we just looked up in our sensor information. You put the sensor ID in there. You can also play around with some of these other settings. They change how the maps look and feel. But for now, we just leave everything as it is. And I'm going to save. And what you'll now notice is over here, the map for the group is giving us a general idea of where the sensor is located. If I click on the map to have a closer look, you can see there is where our sensor is located. And that is pretty much what you need to do to get geolocation into PRTG. So next, we're going to look at how we can monitor Sigfox information using REST sensor. Uh, Sigfox Cloud provides some information about sensors, for example, number of messages they've sent, signal levels, and so on. Uh, this is accessible via a REST API. In PRTG, we have a REST sensor that we can use to query the REST API. Uh, and that's what we're going to have a look at now. One thing, we had to reset our environment so things look a little differently to what they've looked like uh, up till now in the video. Um, but you'll still see uh, what we're talking about. So let's create our device. And we're going to create it in our device group. The name, we're going to call it REST. And in this case, the um, address field needs to be backend.sigfox.com forward slash API. Just a note on the uh, REST documentation from Sigfox perspective, you only have access to that documentation as a Sigfox customer. So that's something you can keep in mind. Um, but for now, we are ready to create our device. There it is. And we're going to add the sensor, the REST sensor. Now, we can get various information from Sigfox. Incidentally, we're using the REST custom sensor. Um, and for this example, we want to know about the messages that the device has been sending in the previous periods. So. Um, we can call this REST messages for the purposes of our example. Now here it needs to be GET. We can set it to HTTPS. You'll see that there's an authentication method. And here we need to get some information from the, back, uh, the, the Sigfox backend about what username and password to use. So in our case, it's going to be basic authentication. And I need to know a user and password. Let's go back to Sigfox. 
And for our device, if we go to group, and in this case, we're going to use this group here. And you can see in the menu, there's API access option. If you click on API access, you can get your login and password. I'm just going to copy these across <clears throat> and put them into the PRTG sensor screen for the rest sensor. Okay. So as the rest query, um, this is this is what we need to put in place um, along with your device ID and keep in mind that you can get the device ID from the Sigfox back end here. It's this ID over here, um, which we've added to our REST query. And here for REST configuration, in the cloud environment, you we have some templates that are already saved for you. And in this case, it's Sigfox device message metric template. Um, but on the on-premises version of PRTG, you're able to set up your own uh, REST configuration. And that is what we need to do for the REST sensor, and we can create this. As you can see, the REST message is now receiving data, and I can click on it to see the channels that we have set up. And we have messages sent in the last day, messages in the last month, week, and so on. Uh, if we have a look at the overview of our device, we now have um, our three sensors for callback, Sigfox location, and REST API. Setup. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to set up sensors and callbacks in Sigfox and to get to monitoring your data in PRTG. The advantage is that in PRTG, you can set up thresholds and alerts for the data. So if temperature levels get too high or humidity gets too high or too low, you can receive alarms and notifications about that information. Um, you also have the ability that, it, that once you've set up the basic setup, it becomes easier to create new devices based on the same configuration. So just to show you an example, here we have our Sigfox video tutorial uh, setup that we've just done with our three uh, devices, um, or three sensors, let's put it that way. But we let's say we have another device that has exactly the same setup that we want to get the same information from. So for, for example, maybe you're monitoring one room and the second room has the same device and we want to do the same monitoring for the second room. What we can do in PRTG is simply right click on the device group and we can say clone and it gives us the option to clone the device uh, or rather the group. And once I've cloned it, you can see here uh, it's all paused at the moment and we've got an exact clone. But of course, now what we need to do is we need to go into each sensor. So for example, into this device, we go uh, into the sensor data, and if we click on settings, here we can change the identifi identification token for these sensors, and we would then go to Sigfox and set up new callbacks with the new tokens. And it's as easy as that, and then you've got your device set up for monitoring uh, a separate room or a separate environment. The final thing that I want to show you is how to put all of this uh, information into what we call maps in PRTG, which is basically building a dashboard, which shows you all the alerts and notifications in different ways, that, uh, wh however you want to see it. Uh, to do this, I'm going to switch to a different environment um, because uh, in another environment, we have some historical data so, it, uh, so you can see what we're talking about with the sensors and, the, and how it's going to look. So what we do in PRTG is you go to maps uh, and we go add map. And now we can say, give it a name, map. We can create the size. And we create our map. And you're taken directly to the map designer screen. We do have a video tutorial for uh, how to do maps in PRTG, so you can refer to that. I'm just going to show you the Sigfox specific stuff uh, with, with some um, information that we've already got. We're going to take as an example this over here. You can see this is our group um, and underneath it various devices with our sensors. Let's pull the group into our map designer as a start and what we can do first of all is, is uh, give a nice sunburst view of all of our sensors that we have there. Um, so that's just a, a way of displaying 
the information in the sunburst way. Uh, we also have some geolocation for the for the uh, the group. So I've pulled the group in again, um, and I want to display it on a map. Here we have an option called Geo Maps, and I'm going to pull in the Geo Map option, and there you can see we have a great map with the radius of the device's location. What we can also do is, let's pull the group in again. We can also provide a high level overview um, of the, the status. And the way that we can do that is to go to the status icons and right at the bottom here, you'll see there's an option called traffic light. If I pull it over, you can see at the moment the traffic light is amber because we have some warnings over there for our sensors. Um, what we can also do is we can create some interesting graphs, for example, for the sensors. Let's put in the sensors over here. And we can then select the option of graphs. And let's do a live graph. Um, pull it over to our sensor and create a bit of space. And then you can see some information about what's been happening with the various data that we're receiving for that sensor. We can also do it for the services. This is uh, uh, things like number of messages and so on that we've been receiving. Let's also do a live graph for that. And there you have it. Um, we also have some Sigfox icons that we can use for various purposes. And um, yeah, I think, I think that just shows how easy it is to create a dashboard using the sensor data that we, we're collecting in PRDG from Sigfox. If you would like further information, we have various articles in our knowledge base. If you go to our knowledge base and search for Sigfox, uh, you can see that we have how can I monitor Sigfox callbacks in PRDG, Sigfox geolocation with PRDG, and also um, how to monitor the Sigfox API with PRTG. So the information step by step is uh, contained in these guides in our knowledge uh, base. And you can also get more information about our sensors and maps from our user documentation. If you find this video helpful, feel free to like it and consider watching our other videos on our channel. If you still have questions, please contact support at pestler.com. And always feel free to comment for feedback or suggestions for other topics. Thank you.